Spectrum Protect version 717 simplifies the process of authenticating user IDs by using an Active Directory database. TSM users and admins can authenticate by using the same user IDs they use to log on to an Active Directory server. In this demo, I'll walk you through the different steps that are involved in setting up this authentication. We'll start out on the LDAP server where we select a ID for the Spectrum Protect server, and then we copy the trusted certificate over to the Spectrum Protect server where we will import that trusted certificate into the server instance directory. And then inside of the dsmserve.op file, we will update the options. And finally, once we bring back up the Spectrum Protect server, we'll issue a set LDAP user command as well as a set LDAP password command. I'll then go ahead and show you how to add in a Spectrum Protect administrator and Spectrum Protect client. A couple things to note before we get started is that the Active Directory database must be installed on the LDAP server and that any of the Spectrum Protect backup archive clients must be at least at version 6.4 or later. And finally, if you have storage agents in your Spectrum Protect environment that want to authenticate node IDs with an LDAP server, they have to use a secure connection such as transport layer security or virtual private network. First, you're going to choose an LDAP server that has an Active Directory database installed. And then you're going to ask the LDAP administrator to create or to utilize an existing ID with at least read-only authority. That's going to be the ID that that Spectrum Protect server utilizes to work with the Active Directory. So we're going to go ahead and create a new user ID. Since I'm the owner of the Spectrum Protect instance, I'll go ahead and give this ID my name. However, you might choose to call it something like TSM owner. You will need the user logon name in order to register this ID with Spectrum Protect. You will need to set a password that is in compliance with the Active Directory rules set up. If you have to change this, not only will you have to go into Active Directory to change that password, but you will also have to make the password change inside of Spectrum Protect. Because you have to inform Spectrum Protect about any changes to this Active Directory user ID's password by using the set LDAP password command in Spectrum Protect. Okay, we've created this new user who's gonna be in charge of the Spectrum Protect and LDAP interface. We need to make sure that it has read access to the accounts on the LDAP server that are used for authentication. So in our case, this Tjong user has full control, even though they only need read control. On the Spectrum Protect server, you will need to set up TLS, and this includes obtaining a certificate from a third-party certificate authority and installing that. Then the LDAP admin needs to provide a copy of the trusted certificate from the LDAP server. And you'll see we've copied that over the CETVM66-LDAP-CER. And this can be called whatever you want. So this trusted certificate is required for the secure communication with TLS. It needs to be copied into the server instant directory. And then the instant owner is going to issue the GSK 8 capicmd underscore 64 command. And as you can see here, the full command is gsk8 capicmd underscore 64 dash cert dash add dash db space cert dot kdb dash stashed dash label. And then you give it whatever label you want. In this case, we'll use CET VM 66 2012 AD as the label, dash file space CET VM 66 dash LDAP dot sir, which is the name of the certificate, dash trust enable. Okay, we've entered the command and now we want to make sure it's been added to the server's key database. And we'll do this by issuing the GS 
K8 CAPI CMD underscore 64 command. And here you'll see the certificate has been added, the CET VM66 2012 AD. Let's go ahead and edit the DSM serve option file, and we're going to specify a URL for the LDAP server. And with this LDAP server URL, the default port is 389. If you wanted to change that, that would be part of the LDAP URL option. And now we're going to start up the Spectrum Protect server so that it catches the new options. Notice when we started up for the first time with these new LDAP URL options, you will get a message saying that the LDAP user must be set before you can use LDAP password authentication. Now that the Spectrum Protect server is up and running, let's go ahead and start up a admin command line. We'll log in with an admin with system privileges. The first command we need to issue is the set LDAP user command. And this specifies the user ID that can log on to the LDAP server. And as you recall, we set up the Tjiang ID in the LDAP server for this purpose. We're going to do set LDAP user and then the full user ID. Alternatively, you could use the SAM account name. Next, we need to do the set LDAP password and give it the password that we set up for Tjiang. Remember, if you change inside of Active Directory Tjong's password, you will have to inform Spectrum Protect about this Active Directory user ID password change with the set LDAP password command. To verify what the LDAP user has been set to, you can issue query status, and you'll see here that the LDAP user has been set to Tjong and that the LDAP password has been set. Notice that the default authentication is currently local. If you did want any new register node or register admin commands to automatically use LDAP authentication, you could issue the set default authentication LDAP, and that would then change this to LDAP. If we go ahead and halt the TSM server, now that we've set the LDAP user and set the LDAP password, during the startup of the Spectrum Protect server, We'll now see these four messages showing that we're running in integrated LDAP mode. With the ANR3273i message, if the LDAP URL is the simple name of the Active Directory server, this message will display the default context distinguish name. Now that the LDAP authentication is set up on the Spectrum Protect server, let's go ahead and register a Spectrum Protect node and a Spectrum Protect administrator using LDAP authentication. You can, of course, use an existing Active Directory ID, but we're going to go ahead and create a new one. We'll create this with the M2 Curtis. Notice the logon ID name. If the LDAP user password is set to change at login or it expires, Spectrum Protect will detect this and ask the user to enter a new password at login. It'll then feed that password back to LDAP where it will be updated in the LDAP server. And if you check out the properties, you'll see that under self, the properties are set to read. So for TSM admins or TSM nodes, we only need to have read as our permissions for self. So now if we do the register node command and we give it the ID that we just created in Active Directory, and we use authentication equals LDAP so that it will get the password from the LDAP server. We use the user ID equals none option so that a client owner admin was not created with the same LDAP user ID as the node ID. This is because when the LDAP user password expired, it would have to be changed for the node ID and user ID. And by default, Active Directory limits you to one password change per day. Here you can see that the node was successfully created and registered to the standard policy domain. You can also register a Spectrum Protect node ID or admin ID, even if a corresponding user ID does not yet exist on the LDAP server. So if we do a register node TSM UER, 
and this TSM UER ID does not yet exist on LDAP, we'll get this warning that an LDAP entry for that node was not found. However, that node is still registered inside of Spectrum Protect. You cannot use that Spectrum Protect ID until there's a corresponding Active Directory entry. If we issue query node DT Curtis at svtldap.storage.tucson.abm.com, format equals detailed, you will see that the authentication is set to LDAP. Let's go ahead and do a backup using the ID that we created with LDAP. And you can see the password we provide is the LDAP password. And here we go, the backup is kicking off. And we have a successful backup. Now if we tried to do that backup with an ID that does not yet exist in LDAP, we would get the following error. Invalid password, session rejected, authentication failure. Inside of the Spectrum Protect Activity Log, you would see that we get an error also with invalid password submitted. And that'll occur until the ID is registered inside of the Active Directory. The registration process for a Spectrum Protect admin is the same. Either use an existing Active Directory ID or create one. We'll create one called TS Admin. Once again, remembering the ID. We'll set the password inside of Active Directory. And then from the Spectrum Protect Admin Console, we'll go ahead and register a admin with the authentication equals LDAP and we'll grant authority. In this case, we'll give that admin system authority. So let's try and log on using our new admin ID that has LDAP authentication. You'll see we put in the Active Directory ID and then for the password we put the Active Directory password that we set up when we created that Active Directory ID. Okay, and we were able to get in no problem. If we issue a query admin TSM admin svtldap.storage.tucson.ibm.com format equals detailed, we'll see the information associated with this administrator, including the fact that the authentication is set to LDAP. If you were to try to update the password for either an admin or node using the update node or update admin command, you would get the following error. The operation cannot be completed when the LDAP mode is set to integrated. Return code 3. Another thing to be aware of, if you did try to register a node with the SAM account name, it would register. But if you also registered that node with the entire Active Directory LDAP name, that too would register. So it's possible you would end up with two different Spectrum Protect node names that both reference the same Active Directory LDAP name. So our recommendation is to use either the entire name or just the SAM account name. We do still support the older integration of LDAP that we had in versions prior to 717. With that, integration, you cannot use the standard user accounts that are registered with the LDAP server. You do have to create an additional organizational unit and then have a user registered in that. And when you register that to the dsmserve.op file, you do need to specify that organizational unit and that user in the dsmserve op file. If the dsmserve op file has this older LDAP URL specified, we will continue to use the older integration method. Our preferred method is the new 717 method. In summary, Spectrum Protect version 717 gives you tighter integration with Active Directory on the LDAP server. It allows you to create Spectrum Protect admins and Spectrum Protect clients using LDAP authentication. Thank you.